Hello, my name is Alma Rodriguez, and today I will be presenting the project titled Electrosprayed Minocycline Loaded PLJ Microparticles with PEG for the Treatment of Glioblastoma. Glioblastoma, or GBM, is a type of brain tumor that is highly aggressive since it causes angiogenesis, which is the tumor's ability to form new blood vessels. Because of this, those diagnosed with GBM have a poor prognosis and loudly, sadly low survival rate. Therefore, a new treatment is necessary. The drug in focus that will be utilized to treat GBM is minocycline, which is a tetracycline-based antibiotic proven to have anti-angiogenic properties, which will be able to decrease tumor growth. To encapsulate the minocycline into the microparticles, polylactic co-glycolic acid, or PLGA, will be utilized since it is versatile, safe, and effective biomaterial. Furthermore, electrospraying was used to fabricate the microparticles because it fabricates consistent microparticles with high entrapment efficiency while being easily modifiable and affordable. The objective is to fabricate electrosprayed minocycline loaded polylactic co-glycolic acid microparticles with optimal morphology, drug loading, loading efficiency, and drug release kinetics for the treatment of glioblastoma. The hypothesis is that the electrospraying parameters such as the drug concentration and presence of polyethylene glycol or PEG will influence microparticle morphology, drug loading, loading efficiency, and drug release kinetics. To test this hypothesis, the following methods were used. Electrospraying, drug loading and loading efficiency, and release kinetics. Our electrospraying setup is seen in figure one, showing the voltage at, at number one, which will be connected to the collection plate. The pump at number two will spray the drug polymer solution in the glass syringe, shown in number three. And number four shows the collection plate where the microparticles will land. Our electrospraying parameters are a flow rate of 2 mLs per hour, voltage of 9 kV, distance of 18 cm, and our collection plate is a glass copper plate. Once the microparticles are collected, they are frozen for a day, lyophilized, and then imaged using scanning electron microscopy, or SEM. To test drug loading, which is the mass ratio of drug to total sample and loading efficiency, which is how much of the initial theorized drug was loaded into the sample. First, you weigh triplicate samples of each microparticle group. Then you add 1 ml of DMSO to each vial and vortex. After your vortex, the, you plate 200 microliters into each well in triplicates and read absorbance in the spectrophotometer. To test the release kinetics, which is the drug release rate, you weigh triplicate samples for each microparticle group. After you add 1 ml of PBS into, into the vial, and at each time point you will centrifuge samples and obtain the supernatant liquid and plate 200 microliters per well and read again in the spectrophotometer. For the results, for the microparticle size and morphology, it is shown on figure 2 the SEM imaging of the different electrospray microparticle groups. The red group is the only group that does not contain PEC, and it is and because of this, it is less aggregated. You can see the groups in the blue, yellow, and green that have PEG have increased aggregation. Furthermore, with an increase in the amount of minocycline, microparticles became more fused and aggregated, as shown as the in the 12MP group in green. All four groups were also within the micron size range, as indicated in figure 3. For drug loading and loading efficiency, it is observed amongst all groups that the higher drug loading was a result of more minocycline being added to the microparticles. The addition of PEG also led to an increased drug loading. This occurred because PEG allows for higher amounts of minocycline to be dissolved, which is shown in figures 4 and 5. For release kinetics, shown in figure 6, a burst release was experienced amongst all four microparticle groups. However, the 12 MP group showed to have a statistically higher drug release from the 1 hour time point to the 7 days time point. In conclusion, the 9.8 microparticle group with 3.5 mg of PEG yielded higher drug loading, loading efficiency, and this occurred because PEG allows for more minocycline to be dissolved, which was proven in a previous solubility study. With no surprise, the 12 MP group, which contained the highest amount of minocycline, yielded the highest drug loading. However, the high amount of minocycline led to increased fusion. Because of this, the 9.8 group is the most promising group for the treatment of GBM, because it yielded unfused microparticles while still having high drug loading and loading efficiency. Overall, electrospraying is a promising process to fabricate minocycline loaded microparticles for the treatment of glioblastoma multiform. However, in future studies, we will continue to investigate optimizing the fabrication of minocycline loaded microparticles with PEG to yield increased drug loading, loading efficiency, release kinetics, and non-aggregated spherical particles. I'd like to acknowledge that this project is supported by the NIH support of competitive research. Thank you very much.